It's been a while now since I covered Action 52 on the NES and the saga of the Cheetah Men. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please do go and check out those videos before you see this one and make my suffering worth it. Now, I think I've had enough rounds of therapy to actually tackle the other Action 52 game, because yes, there were two, because life is pain. Yes, the infamous Action 52, a collection of absolutely bobbins games sold at a ridiculous price to unsuspecting NES owners back in the early 90s. The company Active Enterprises was the business name of creator Vince Perry, a businessman with zero understanding of games and more money than sense, apparently. Perry came up with the idea of a single cartridge with a bunch of games on it after seeing a knockoff multicar in action. He figured if he could make a legal version, the dollars would roll in. And this was back when Nintendo didn't really have a hold on what sort of bobbins ended up on their home console systems, so Action 52 was home and dry. While this one was released in 1991, the Genesis version would not be released until 1993, after the buzz about Action 52 had died down. The literal couple of college students who made the NES version were thankfully not let back on for the project. Instead, Active Enterprises outsourced the creation of this version to Farsight Technologies. This was a company founded in 1988 by the now congressman Jay Obernolte. But if I'm honest, just the sentence, this guy is responsible for an Action 52 game, is already all I need to know to make a judgement on his personality. <laughs> Anyway, despite being a relatively young company, Farsight at the time had massively better developers on their side. This version also got a whole year to be made, so any of the bugs and failures of the NES version could have easily been sorted out. And that's one thing to say about the Genesis version. It's not buggy. It works. There was going to be a Super Nintendo Entertainment System version released around the same time, but that never came to fruition. I also couldn't find definitively who was going to be responsible for that one, but I think it was probably going to be Farsight Studios. You see, Active Enterprises had definitely signed a deal with Farsight to make more games, but then Active Enterprises ended up going under pretty soon after, and thankfully never got any more games from them ever again. Which means once this video is over, I will never have to talk about Active Enterprises or Action 52 ever again. Thank Christ. Please disregard any and all previous notices. Uh, okay, what notices? This is literally the first thing that you see once you turn the game on. Weird. It's like the company is trying to cover themselves for something that they never claimed. Like that this is a decent use of your money and time. They never explicitly said that anywhere. I should start doing that for my videos. Please disregard all previous notices. I am not as physically attractive as I appear in the video thumbnail. Oh yeah, we're about to play some Action 52! Big bitch! Ooh, animation! Nice! The game titles are coloured green for easy, purple for intermediate and yellow for experts. Blue means two player and those ones are only two player. That means there's a bunch of these games I can't even play because I have no friends. Also, how the heck the developers decided on the difficulty of these games, I have no clue. There really isn't much difference in that between the games, but I guess I'll rant about that later. Let's play the first game, Bonkers, or Go Bonkers. Well, that's creepy as hell. On the NES version, there was only a couple of games that even had title screens. Not all the games on this cartridge have title screens, but a lot more do. And I guess that helps make it feel like these are standalone games rather than snippets of one single mental breakdown. At first, you might think this is a Breakaway clone. You know, that classic tile smashing game that's actually good. But now this is Breakaway if it was made by an idiot. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, for the most clown shoes excuse for a puzzle game ever. Your little ball thing, although it does move constantly up and down, is otherwise entirely under your control. You can press it left or right and it'll go wherever. You need to clear the screen by switching the ball to the right colour by hitting these friggin' spatulas. For extra bullshit, you need to clear all green blocks before you switch to a different colour because you can never change the ball back to green. That becomes especially bobbins in later levels when things get more complex. Oh, and there's a random Luftwaffe symbol that kills you. Did that ball just scream? How? What? Why is Tutankhamun's death mask in the background? Looking way too smug for a dude who shagged his sister and then died at age 18. Dial it back, love. 
that's kind of it. The levels get a bit more complex as you go along, but since you're driving this thing rather than having to bounce it off anything else, there's not really any skill needed. It's just like ticking a bunch of boxes on a form. Boring. Dark sign. Gratuitous use of a Y in that one. You gotta make it look cool. Well, you wanna call it dark sign? Pfft, this is dark sign. Oh, this one doesn't look too bad. Top-down space shooter, but you can use a shield to stop your ship exploding on the scenery. This makes this one actually playable. It's not a good game, but yeah, this one passes. I'll allow it. I'd pay you about 10p for this one, maybe. Dino Tennis. Spelled Dino, because screw you! We're using up the spare Ys from Dark Sign. Also, two-player only, because screw you! Two dinosaurs holding trees smashing a caveman over a fence. That has the potential to be an amazing game, but as it is, it's a cop-out and a waste of money. But I would pay you one penny just for that caveman flailing hilariously because it did make me expel air out of my nose fast, which is more than any BuzzFeed article has ever done. Ooze. If you recall, the NES version also had ooze and that had a whole competition based around it. Oh, not snot, please. <laughs> Oh, oh I, I can't stand mucus. Why do you have to make a game about snot? I mean, come on, guys. This one is nothing like Ooze on the NES was. It's far more of a platformer, and in this one you actually have to pick up keys in order to go to the next bit. Definitely more of a game on a technical level than the NES version was, but still, in a non-technical way, sheer baubles. Problem one, fall damage. Oh, come on! Two, this guy's gun is pathetic. Three, if you just slightly touch the edge of an enemy or one of these pressy things, you're dead. Disintegrated. Why is there a bee here? It looks like it just wandered in from a different game. Also, the main character crouches like a lap dancer. Yes, girl, twerk it! Amongst all of that snot, that was obviously someone's fetish. Starball. Crappy pinball game based on the last time you took an edible. Look at this livid bloke in a little go-kart. Raging. Angry face there, also livid. Sperm thing, livid. Everyone's very angry. We are five games in now and I am really flagging. The NES version of Action 52? I could seriously go on all day about that. It was so broken and crap but in a funny way. There are all sorts of glitches that you could cause and find. But this is just crap in an unremarkable way and that makes it really difficult to write an entertaining script about. I mean, what, what, what jokes can I make here? I mean, this is just crap. Sidewinder. Really poorly cut out enemy planes and a really awkward crosshair. It does look cool at first, but the more you look at it, the worse it gets, like anything involving Russell Brand. And yeah, crap, absolute crap. Daytona. Daytona! Daytona? You start out with a bunch of cash to pay for entrance into the races, get more cash by winning the races so you can enter more races, to get more cash to enter more races. Races that are boring as hell. The graphics are frankly offensive at this point. The other cars look like if cars had flesh and theirs has been ripped off. They actually do look like bloody messes. Cars 4 got dark quickly. The instruction book offers some tips on how to keep winning these races. If you run into a tree, your car is stopped and you must accelerate to speed again. This costs time. Does it, love? D does stopping and then having to get back up to speed take time? Does does it, love? Is that right, love? Is, is, is doing one thing and then going to do the other thing, does, does the time between that literally take time? Is that what it does? This copywriter was clearly getting paid by the word, so let's just freaking smash as many useless sentences in as possible. Come on, let's go. 15 puzzle. It's a tile sliding game. Oh God, oh, just, just skip it. I, I don't even care. Oh, also, screw you for putting this on a friggin' Mega Drive. To prove that the copywriter for the instructions was getting paid by the word, I present to you the most excellent example of word stuffing I have ever seen. The order must start with the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the top level. Numbers 5, 6, 7 and 8 on the second row, 9, 10, 11 and 12 on the third row, and 13, 14 and 15 on the bottom. Cannot count to 15. Where 15? Cannot number. Where count? Yes, Action 52 assumes that even though you're able to pick up a controller without chewing at first, you can't count up to the amount of times I've drunkenly cut my hair because I thought I'd look cute with bangs. And this game can piss off. Sketch! 
Welcome to the world's worst drawing program since the LJN video art. I tried very hard to draw a penis and write the word bollocks, but the cursor is a nightmare. It's like drawing on an Etch-a-Sketch that is simultaneously telling you to fuck off. Sorry guys, I tried my best. Star Jewel. Another two-player game. Got to admit I like the background, it looks trippy. But this is just that crappy top-down shooter from earlier, but with two people. Or in my case, one. At least the music gets good. Haunted Hills. Oh, Miss Tits from the NES version isn't here. Probably got an appointment with her plastic surgeon. But don't worry, Mr. Overalls is here to save the day. According to the instructions, his name is Tommy Toe. Tommy Toe. Is that a pun? Because all I'm hearing is tomato. I don't get it. It's a crappy platformer with the usual horror game fare. Bats and rats, that kind of thing. Full damage, yep plus overkill scenery. Look at this pile of blood-stained utensils someone's fly-tipped here. It's like back of house at Weatherspoons. Alfredo. You're a chef trying to catch pasta from a boiling cauldron, but if you catch a meatball or a sausage, you die. These things have been boiled alive. Of course they're gonna jump out of the pot, Alfredo. At least have the decency to kill the stuff before boiling it. Chefs are psychopaths, man. Cheetah Men. I've already covered this in my Cheetah Men video, and for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna keep it short. This is crap. But again, it's not crap enough in a funny way to make good jokes about it. It's just crap. And I really have tried, but I just can't get past this first bit where you're only playing as Mr. Meat Market here. So I've got no idea if the levels with the other two cheetah men are any fun or not, but I'm willing to bet probably friggin' well not. It's just a really tired, boring platformer with fall damage and massive friggin' snakes that come out of nowhere. I mean, given the size of this cheetah, you would expect him to not be so completely shitted up so easily, but here we are. Not fun. Skirmish. It's another two-player only game, sort of like chess but with tiny soldiers and tanks. You can tell that Farsight were quite proud of this one. It gets its own scrolling title screen and everything. Only the dead have seen the end of war. Okay, I wasn't expecting to have an existential crisis and somewhat of a depressive manic episode due to the knowledge of us all being disposable pawns grabbed and moved about by disgusting soulless cretins at the very top of the social and financial chain today. But here I am. The Americans must have a real boner for this General Douglas MacArthur if he got the coveted spot on an Action 52 title screen. The quote is actually from one of the guy's more famous speeches. It's just a bit weird to see it here. Having a real quote from a real general is just... is too real. I'm playing Action 52. I don't want to be thinking about all the millions of people who've been murdered, raped, lost family members, homes, been ostracised, dismembered, experimented on, irreparably traumatised or blown to pieces by shrapnel. But yeah, the game's probably crap. Depth charge. Oh, how are we only on game 15? Well, we've still got war in the mind because you're a battleship captain about to drop bombs on a bunch of submarines. Avoid the missiles or your ship will catch fire underwater. Yep. Some of the submarines aren't even bothering. This one's parked itself on some poorly drawn seabed. Well, there's a nutter in a yacht chucking minesweeper mines out of a frantically gesticulating set of hardware. <laughs> May as well just die. Mine's eye. Oh, speaking of Minesweeper mines, yes, it's Minesweeper, but on a Mega Drive or Genesis. Just what you always wanted, right? Next game. Alien Attack. All right, so you're a guy with a big gun and, oh my, oh Jesus, what the shit? That green gorilla thing is keen, isn't it? Thankfully, it only runs in a straight line, so it's not even that hard to shoot or avoid. It just really makes you jump the first time it comes barreling out of nowhere. Oh, and Medusa's here. Yeah, okay. Now, this is just a rubbish scrolling shooter game with very little skill required. The only thing that makes it even slightly difficult is that this dude is running so far to the right that you can't see the angry gorilla until it's all up in your ass. And that is not appropriate. This is a game for children, not an SNL skit. Billy Bob. The NES version of Billy Bob was some sort of Prince of Persia knockoff that pretty much delivered an entire fuck you on the second screen. But for some reason, this version is a first person shooter in some kind of cowboy town. It's not fun because the cursor is sluggish and you've got limited bullets with no way of defending yourself from any idiot trying to kill you aside from killing him first. I've run out of bullets. Guess I'll just stand here and let these guys kill me then. Thank God, next game. Sharks. 
ah, oh, the sharks are attacking by swimming in a straight line from one side of the screen to the other. Good God, look at the sunburn on this lad. Mate, you are just asking for cancer. But then again, you have just thrown yourself into shark infested waters armed only with a spear. So I do kind of feel like this is Darwinism in motion here. Oh, that is a brutal death. The mortal combat of the fishing industry. Oh! When Simon SPF here gets killed in an explosion of blood, the flesh and muscle is ripped from his failing skeleton. That is honestly the best thing I've seen so far in this compilation. More gratuitous bloody deaths, please. Knockout. Mwah. Another two player only game. Great. Two identical twins punching the absolute shit out of each other. If I wanted to see that, I'd place a full length mirror next to a drunk uncle at a wedding. Intruder. You're a bloke in a green jumpsuit with one of the weirdest walk cycles I have ever seen. He looks like he's trying to smuggle something out of a supermarket. Touch the walls of this maze and you'll die. Get run into by one of these robots and you'll die. I've now reached a level of boredom. I'd probably be distracted by a Wikipedia article about door hinges. Level 1 It's Simon. It's uh, you, you know that memory game from like the, the 70s or, or whatever? It's it's Simon on, 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 on a Mega Drive. What a cop out. They didn't even bother trying to make it look nice. It's just some frigging grey slab flying through space. Like who gives a shit about that? Who gives a shit about Simon in these days? But who gives a shit about that? At least make it so that the pictures and the sounds you're trying to remember are something fun, like, I don't know, a, a cat meowing, or, or how about a cute little man waving, or, or how about just a picture of me telling you to piss off. <coughs> Have a bit of that. <laughs> Freeway. You're a dog that doesn't have anything better to do than go to the other side of a six lane motorway and pick up balls and bones. And you have the cold dead eyes of a killer. Look at this poor thing. Someone put it out of its misery. <gasps> oh, are you, are you okay? Yeah, you okay? That is hands down the most brutal death scene I've ever seen. This dog is torn to tiny pieces, organs smashed out. You're out of order, guys. Sharks exploding into bloody pulp. That's fine because sharks are renowned for being bastards and nobody cares about them. But none of us want to see a flattened dog. We're gamers. We absolutely lose our shit if you can pet a dog in a game. You could have the world's crappest game and if you were allowed to pet a dog, we'd just give it five friggin' stars. We don't want to live out dog ownership vicariously by watching a dog stagger over a friggin' six lane highway just to get absolutely smashed to bits. That's horrendous. Mousetrap. Oh no, someone's dropped all their cheese on the floor. Never mind, you're a mouse in a blazer and you're gonna pick it all up. Now obviously this is a crap game too, but there is something so charming about the way those cats shuffle along with this music in the background. <laughs> So there's a TV and a sofa and stuff in the background, so this is obviously someone's front room, but who the hell has this many cats? I really hope this isn't a snapshot into my future. But there's friggin' hundreds of them, and they don't even eat the mouse when they catch it, the mouse just sort of deflates like a balloon. It's like, yeah, okay, bloody sharks, that's, that's, that's fine. Intestines of a dog being spread across a motorway, yeah, we're fine with that, but we're, we're not gonna animate a, a friggin' mouse getting eaten by a cat, no way, that's too much, that's, that's gonna, that's gonna traumatise some kids. I was hoping to see an explosion of blood spurting from a cat's mouth, but I suppose if I really want to see that, I can just go and find the nearest cat and try and stroke its belly. Ninja. You're a ninja with throwing stars who can jump about 20 foot into the air, which is probably why these bad guys in red are just running right past him. I wouldn't mess with a bloke who's able to jump on the roof of my house. Oh, oh he's gonna get me. He's, he's gonna get me. To oh, no. This is Hollywood levels of action scenes. Crap. Next game. Slalom. Game 26. We're about halfway through the games now and it feels like I've aged 10 years already. By the time this video is finished, I'm going to be so ancient, travel influencers will be climbing to the top of a mountain to ask me for sage advice. It's slalom, but not a slalom. Literally just some dude slowly sliding down a hill, screaming when he hits a tree, then calmly and horizontally skiing off the slope. Even a yeti couldn't save this one. It really is so bad. It feels like a game you'd get free in a box of the world's worst series. Dauntless. 
Oh great, it's already a mediocre one of those side-scrolling shooters Action 52 is so fond of, but to add to the bullshit, now there's clouds obscuring your plane and the other planes. But it doesn't add to the difficulty that much, it just makes it way more annoying. I keep wanting to wipe that top layer of clouds off the screen. Force One. Yay, another space shooter. With really, really weird looking enemy ships. Spidey. Oh, it's more of that collecting stuff bullshit. But this time it's a spider harvesting a very successful round of fly catching. Except, oh no, these blue bastards are coming in to mess it all up. I am so bored I could cry. I like the aggressive sound when a fly gets picked up though, like he's been punched in the face. Which I would personally welcome right now. Just, just friggin punch me in the face. Apple seed. Old farmer lad has chosen to pick his crop of apples by standing under the trees like a prick with a little basket. But don't get the green ones because that makes him very angry for some reason. Skater. You're skating along this really weird road that's covered in dead cats and bits of old machinery on the shorefront of a beach full of giant mounds of crap with obviously drunk woman in bikinis waving at you. It is nice to see Blackpool represented so well in a game, I guess. Why is the music so panicky? I'm supposed to be skateboarding, not opening posts from inline revenue. Sunday Drive. You're one of those pricks in a BMW who thinks that they own the road, weaving between traffic while apparently, uh... Is the driver wanking? Yeah, I think he is. I guess you've got to liven up those long car journeys in America somehow. When I first played this, I could not see what it says on those signs since they go by so fast. I thought it said, night shit, which struck me as odd since that's usually a morning thing. It actually says next exit again and again. I suppose after more than 30 editions of boring, repetitive gameplay, stupid as hell music and graphics that include variously horrendously killed animals, night shit is just where my brain was taking me. Star Evil, another one with the same name as one from the original but this time you're a ship that explodes into blood when hit. No, never mind. Air Command. This big winged bomber has got to get home without being taken down by the enemies. How exciting. Instead of scrolling from the left or from the bottom, this one really mixes it up by being a scrolling down game. Wow, what will the guys at Farsight Interactive think of next? Scrolling from the right, maybe? I've seen roundabouts that get me more excited. Shootout. You know, I'm starting to think that Action 52 just really, really does not like animals. Look at these bears, they are very clearly suicidal and they just want to be shot. So what you have here is essentially a more slapstick version of Dignitas. When you shoot a crow, it makes a noise like an intestine being pulled through a nostril. Look at how depressed those bears are. Seeing a load of bears scroll past and being given the sweet release of death just feels like taking the piss at this point. In fact, make a space, bears, I'm coming in. Hey! Ow! Bombs away. Our lad here has got himself into some serious trouble, running through a fishing village while bombs rain down on civilians. A special military operation, I assume. And this guy too, who turns into a patch of lint on legs when hit. Or is he supposed to have melted? Ah, the horrors of war. So whimsical. Speedboat. Oh god, it's another top-down bullshit one. I am so bored. Oh, what the hell is this little guy doing here with his tiny boat and fishing rod? Mate, can't you see how dangerous this place is with all those logs and bits of gravestone? This is like joyriding in the River Thames. There's probably hundreds of shopping carts and bodies of drug dealers under all this water. Dead ant. Oh, so bored. So bored. An ant throwing sick at other ants. That's the game. You know what? If you'd have said to me, hey, hey, Octi, there's, there's this game where you're an ant and you're throwing your own vomit at other ants, I would never have dreamed in a million years that it would be as arse-achingly boring as this game is. I mean, that's a great premise for a game. Ants throwing sick at other ants? Wasn't that the tagline that got a bug's life greenlit? With this weird dyed hair background and those indestructible ticks running around, I'm quite sure this is just a game about Jared Leto's pubic hair. G-Fighter. Oh, well, Level that's bullshit. One. How is that fair when my ship can't even turn around? That is not, it's not fair. But it is yet another crap scrolling shooter because we haven't had enough of them already. <laughs>
Man at arms. You're defending the castle with your crossbow. Brutal. The invading army doesn't seem entirely bothered though, they're barely even showing up. I like how they all clearly have shields, but don't think of using them to defend against an arrow. Idiots. Norman. Norman? Who the hell's Norman? Is it the person driving the tank? The actual tank itself? One of these utter mad lads just casually wandering into a tank battlefield? Armour battle. Another two player one. Ugh, what a waste of time. Beanstalk. Look at the utter arm strength of this guy. This is not the level of fitness you'd expect to see from someone with a body type that looks like a teardrop. Apache. More top-down scrolling bullshit. I am really flagging now. I mean, I am so bored that even my tax returns are looking pretty friggin' sweet right now. If I screw this, I'm just gonna go for a walk. Uh Paratrooper. Oh crap, this paratrooper really looked out when he landed in enemy territory. Because not only does he have to find parts of a supercomputer, he also has to avoid some mental robots that are able to pass through walls. What a day. And an enemy army that just leaves pieces of supercomputer in a field is probably commanded by a piece of string wrapped around the head of a cat, so I can't see why they're especially a threat. I'm thinking too hard about this. Sky Avenger. Ooh, flying in from the right this time. Well, it's good to mix things up. Still crap though, very, very crap. Sharpshooter. He's such a sharpshooter, he can shoot directly in front of him with zero deviation. Meanwhile, the shooting gallery itself is full of all manner of absolute abominations, including this meth Pac-Man. I spent a long time trying to work out what the bloody hell these things are before realizing they're supposed to be flies. It's just that their legs have been drawn in black and can't be seen until they broach the fence at the front here, which is when they'll bless you with the sweet release of death. Meteor. Oh no, there's meteors raging down on this interstellar town, oh no. Meteors that look more like highly inflamed spermazota. You really should get yourself checked out if your jizz comes out on fire. Not to woman's blame or anything. Black hole. Ah yes, the scientists have finally discovered what it is inside a black hole. It's not a huge mass of swallowed matter compressed down to an infinitely tiny point. It's not a billions and billions years old accumulation of radiation. It's an absolutely bobbins space shooter. The laziest in this collection, actually. You can tell by this point the developers had absolutely zero shits left to give. They were really running on empty now. Thank God there's only two games left. The Boss. David Icke was right. The world is being taken over by lizard people. Lizard people who walk like this and look like that. Who is the boss in this situation? The guy you're playing who's climbing up and down ladders picking up dollar notes? Because he's an idiot. Maybe it's this fat frog with an Uzi. Or this crocodile thing with a semi-automatic rifle? No, apparently it's the lizard gang that's loose. The lizard gang. And this one in a fedora is trying to find all the money hidden by the gang. The Lizard Gang. Oh, isn't that an excellent name? It's like, you know, you've got to be careful for the friggin' human gang in South London. Although that gang is nothing compared to the gentrification and house prices gang. They'll, they'll, they'll mess you up. First game. What am I doing with my life? Of course Pong is on here. They couldn't even be bothered to decode a computer to play against you. The instruction book reckons Pong is the predecessor of all video games, which of course is rubbish, even if you don't take into account that the predecessor of all video games was, you know, any physical games at all, on boards or on the pitch or whatever. Before Pong came Computer Space in 1971, and that was based on the 1962 game Space War that students came up with on the data processing computers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And before even that there were various electronic versions of games like 1952's tic-tac-toe program by alexander s douglas and even the concept of pong itself was preceded by tennis for two and that was made in 1958 on radar equipment so no matter how you look at it pong really isn't the first game it's not even the first game on this cartridge it's, it's the last because they they really they they don't care and I do mean the last game because game number 52 on this Action 52 isn't even a game. It's all the single player games one after the other at random, but only the hardest levels. And good God, it's some bullshit. 
This is when you realize that in order to successfully 100% complete Action 52, because you know, you're a mentalist or whatever, you would need to have the reflexes of a jet fighter pilot. A jet fighter pilot that was also able to capture and master the ins and outs of time dilation. Because in Action 52, Difficulty isn't about honing your skills or, or, or practicing again and again. It's not even about forcing your way to remember the exact times to press whichever buttons to sort of cheese your way through. No, it's not like that at all. In Action 52, high difficulty means throwing all manner of shit at you at 100 million miles per hour. Screw you, get good. Wow, that must be how my therapist feels. Most of the side-scrolling games just go into absolute overdrive and go, yeah, there you go, that's your difficulty level up, screw you, don't even care. But some of them will just make things harder by throwing some more enemies in there. Look at this in G-Force 1. These ships are going mental. The top-down collecting bullshit just ups the ante by making whatever it is that's killing you suddenly move quicker than a scouser at a free bar. Get the drinks in, lad. Grab one for me while you're there. In Sharks, the entire ocean is out to get you, and you have to harpoon so much of it to win the game. I was playing a good 10 minutes without dying and still didn't succeed. There must be so much blood in this patch of ocean, it makes a BP oil spill look like a dead sunfish, which is convenient considering that's what BP oil spills specialise in. It turns out Ooze, one of the few games on this cartridge that seem to have any substance to them, is actually only four levels long, and the fourth level is bullshit. You just need to keep going back and forth on these platforms, picking up the key again and again while snot bubbles try and mess you up. Sunday Drive doesn't speed up, there's just more idiots on the road out to claim on their insurance. Meanwhile, all the bears and crows in Shootout have apparently inhaled about a kilogram of meth each. Hey, give me some of that. I want to separate my mind from my body. And of course, having this as the 52nd game means that Action 52 is not even Action 52. It doesn't even have 52 games. Not that I'm complaining. I think if I had to play just one more poorly executed clusterfuck of a game, I would have gone outside and just killed the first person that I see. But when you really get down to it, this isn't even 51 games. It's just a handful of games with graphic swaps. The types of games are side-scrolling shooter, static shooter, collecting bullshit, then you've got games where you're literally just trying to avoid stuff, and then there's the puzzle games, and a total of three platforming games. The only games that are games in their own right would be Go Bonkers, Dark Sign, and Dino Tennis and they are just the first three games. The developers literally put all their effort into the first three games and then got bored. That being said, I do think they got hold of some kind of sugar rush around Haunted Hills because that one does seem to have had some effort put in. But then after that, it's just a sugar crash all the way home. This was honestly one of the hardest scripts I've ever written because it is just so completely unremarkable. It's like an egg mayonnaise sandwich or the music of Cardi B. It's kind of like how, you know, you might stop and watch two absolutely leathered lads outside of Weatherspoons hit each other. It's kind of like, well, that's, that's not great, is it? But I'm, I'm just, I'm... I've spent hours on this game and I can honestly say that I can maybe remember off the top of my head, I don't know, about seven or maybe eight of them I could write down. Out of 51 games, I can remember about seven of them. I suppose if you're one of those people who enjoys games that are so bad they are good, the NES version of Action 52 is the one you want. I actually enjoyed parts of that because of how utterly awful it is. It's fun to find the glitches and laugh at the graphics that barely look like they've got out of bed yet. The Genesis version is just not fun. It's not fun in any way at all. Well, I think we are done here. Oh, you're still here. Are you... Whoa, oh no, okay, no, 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 no! Ah! <laughs> Level 2. Ah.